Bienvenue tous. Welcome to Reporters here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. In this edition, how Donald Trump is trying to make up for lost time over the COVID pandemic. He launched an operation to vaccinate the people, calling it Warp Speed. The aim is to have 300 million doses available by the end of January 2021. Now, remember, it was Trump who played down the seriousness of the uh, virus and ridiculed rivals who wore face masks. All that until he caught the virus himself. Trump recovered, but unlike the president, ordinary Americans don't have access to the very best care and drugs free of personal charge. Well, Matthew Mabans, our reporter in Washington. Matthew, what is warp speed? Tell us about it. Well, Mark, you must remember Star Trek from when you were younger. The name of this operation was borrowed from the famous TV series. But it's come back to bite them, because the main gripe that Americans are starting to have with this vast vaccination campaign is how slow it's proving to be. Its aims haven't been met. Only a quarter of its objectives have been achieved as I'm speaking to you now. Mathieu Baban there, thank you very much. Let's take a look at the report then by Mathieu and Fanny Allard. Breaking news now, let's get to it. It has to do with COVID-19. It was another day of fast-moving developments in this coronavirus emergency. The World Health Organization has just declared that this is a pandemic. An international public health emergency. It is a pandemic at this point. At least 45 states now and the District of Columbia reporting cases. job with it and it will go away just stay calm do not underestimate this virus we direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. I'm going to be doing an executive order today uh, directing all Floridians to limit movements and personal interactions. So we're going to put out an executive order today. New York State on pause. There is no nation that has been or will be as deeply committed to delivering vaccines all around the world. There's no guarantee that we will have a safe and effective vaccine, but we are cautiously optimistic. Do your job, Mr. President. We'll have manufactured at least 100 million vaccine doses before the end of the year. Naval Station Norfolk in Virginia. It's the world's largest naval station and home to the biggest concentration of U.S. Navy forces. It is also home to the Portsmouth Naval Medical Center, which can treat up to 6,000 wounded at once. Any yeses to any of the COVID questions? <laughs> All right, have a good one. When Donald Trump launched Operation Warp Speed, U.S. Armed Forces were quickly called in to help. On December 15th, just days after the Food and Drug Administration issued an emergency use authorization for the first COVID vaccine, the naval base sprung into action. After production and distribution, the United States turned its attention to rolling out the largest vaccination campaign in its history. You afraid of needles? Uh, no, I'm just getting sweaty. Don't worry, make it quick. You ready, man? Yes. Three, two, one. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. How are you feeling? Good? Yeah, all right. Thank you. The precious vaccine doses arrived overnight under escort to be given first to healthcare workers, those who are on the front lines of the fight against the pandemic. You're going to head over 
doctors and nurses who will soon be asked to vaccinate the general public. I know that it's a safe vaccine to um, get and it's been shown to be pretty effective in the preliminary report. So I trust that it's, it's a good vaccine. I think getting COVID is much more dangerous than any potential allergic reaction from the vaccine. I'm hoping as long as the vaccine keeps rolling out that we'll be a little bit more protected by the end of next year. Though only about 60 percent of Americans say they'll get inoculated, these soldiers have no doubts about the safety of the two vaccines already being distributed. For them, Operation Warp Speed and the vaccine are the only way out of this pandemic. The faster people get vaccinated, the sooner the number of daily deaths will drop. Warp Speed hit us with this vaccine because we now are trying to get the vaccine to as many people as we can, as fast as we can, and as long as we do it safely. We've had a few pandemics in the last few years. So, you know, we had Ebola, we've had Zika, uh, and we've had COVID, and I suspect this is not the last one, unfortunately. So we're going to use the lessons learned so it will be a little faster. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by these vaccines, to be honest. I, if these continue to work as well as they are so far, it's going to make it a lot faster to get vaccines for the next. It started as a public health crisis. Then it became an economic crisis, and finally, a political crisis. It was only after months spent downplaying the seriousness of the coronavirus pandemic that the Trump administration turned to the U.S. military for help, launching Operation Warp Speed, which became a key talking point on the campaign trail. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. I'm honored to welcome doctors, scientists, industry executives, and state and local leaders to our historic Operation Warp Speed Vaccine Summit. It's been some journey for all of us. It's been an incredible success. The gold standard vaccine has been done in less than nine months. On behalf of the entire nation, I want to thank everyone here today who has been involved in this extraordinary American initiative. Monchef Slawi, where are you, Monchef? Thank you very much. Great job. Two of the vaccines have both 100 percent efficacy against severe disease. They are equivalently efficacious in people over the age of 65. As the coronavirus wreaked havoc across the world, respected epidemiologist Dr. Monsef Slawi took action. Calling in the army for help was his idea. Months before a vaccine was even authorized, Dr. Slawi was already planning the next steps. For him, the whole operation could only be a success if it was managed by scientists, organized by the military, and implemented by logistics experts, while steering clear of pressure from both political leaders and the media. Why did you accept Donald Trump's request to get involved in this venture? Despite my reticence to work with this administration, with whom I'm not aligned, I decided it was much more important to help discover, develop and speed up the process that would lead to a vaccine. I was really worried, and I still am, about the politicization of how the vaccine was discovered. It created a tension, a loss of trust among the public in general, because the rigorous scientific work that took place was mixed up with political posturing on both sides. One side said it wasn't possible, we can't do it, there must be something wrong. And the other side says we'll get it done before the election. I believe they were both wrong. They scared people, even though the work we did was absolutely scientific, rigorous and data-driven. A political battle amid a global pandemic was the worst possible scenario for the scientist. I hope people will soon have the opportunity to listen to those whom they trust. 
and I hope they'll come to the conclusion that these vaccines are safe and they'll help us return to normal life. While Operation Warp Speed won praise for helping with the research and production of a COVID vaccine, it has fallen short of its vaccination goals. The Trump administration had promised 20 million Americans would be vaccinated by the end of 2020. So far, only 9 million doses have been administered. Distribution has also been slower than expected, despite a good chunk of the $10 billion allocated to the operation going into shipping. They've been on trucks and on planes, they've been stacked, they've been packed. The world's largest shipping company, FedEx, refused our requests for an interview. These images were given to us by their communications department. We handle millions of vaccines every year. Uh, we handle temperature-controlled shipments every day. These vaccine manufacturers and the distributors, they're already our customers. We know them, we know their business. So the government came to us because they know we have the expertise in this. They know we have the network and the capabilities and the know-how to do it. It won't be up to us to decide who gets the vaccine first. Our job is to get them to the right place. Our goal is to move COVID-19 vaccine shipments as safely and quickly as possible. We want to get them to the communities in need as fast as we can. Not fast enough for some of the hardest hit areas in the country. Nearly a month after the first vaccine was authorized, some vaccination centers are still waiting for their doses, while nearly 4,000 Americans die every day from COVID-19. That's the case in Baltimore, where healthcare workers are doing their best to treat COVID patients, but are unable to get them vaccinated. And now we're doing monoclonal infusions and it's not a vaccine, but it, if you have COVID, that monoclonal infusion, it, it is believed, can help reduce your chances of hospitalization. So we're giving that infusion as a COVID treatment, but we're not yet a vaccine site. These delays are causing more people to question the safety of the vaccine. I will take the vaccine when it does come, um, you know, not immediately. I want to see you know, what comes of it, if there's any side effects with, you know, there's a bunch of different companies that are putting out vaccines. I want to see how well the actual public does with it. The Baltimore Convention Center is the largest COVID testing and treatment site in the state of Maryland. While local authorities did not grant us access, they say everything is ready to start the immunization campaign. Everything except the vaccine itself. It's a sunny day today, but we have a rough winter ahead of us. All the models show that this is going to get worse. In, the, in Maryland, already the number of hospital beds that are occupied is equal or more than what we had the worst in, in April and May. Right now, the U.S. is averaging about 500,000 vaccinations a day. But President-elect Joe Biden says he'll double that rate, pledging to administer 100 million shots in his first 100 days in office. A report by Matthew Maban and Fanny Ella. Matthew is still with us. Uh, thanks for that report, Matthew. Fascinating stuff. Operation Warp Speed, as it's rolling out, we're told by the health department some 10 million people have been vaccinated, which sounds impressive. But what's the story behind this? What's really happening? Eh bien, tout simplement, les promesses the promises, par the objectives Trump set by Donald Trump, his entourage and the Operation Warp Speed, Speed team uh, haven't been met. You need to put these promises uh, in their context. They were made during the presidential election campaign, election which had a decisive influence on the communication done around this operation. In the report, we heard Dr. Monsef Slaoui condemn how the electoral climate distorted the work of scientists, 
coordinators and the military staff behind the operation. Today, depending on the region, only between 10 and 25 percent of the objectives have been achieved. Health workers, who were apparently the first in line to get vaccinated, haven't all been vaccinated yet. And as long as that's not the case, a widespread rollout for the general population can't begin. And Mathieu, among uh, Trump's supporters, there are many who say that COVID is a hoax. Uh, they refuse to wear face masks. Uh, how is all this affecting the situation in the USA? We know enough to say that the refusal to wear masks has had serious consequences for areas where this practice is particularly common. In particular, the middle of the United States, where Donald Trump has the most voters and where virus figures are at their most disastrous. There's a direct cause and effect link there. History will be the judge of Trump's speeches and the way he treated this virus with, it must be said, a light touch, at least at first, after which there was a U-turn which the report highlighted very clearly. There was a U-turn in communication strategy, but this new strategy made unrealistic promises. So, Matthew, if this works, Operation Warp Speed, will it be because of Trump or in spite of Trump? How much was down to the president? How much is down to the medical teams that he's so often ridiculed? History will be the judge of that. What we do know is that American society and the world as a whole owes it to the scientific community, which has worked miracles here, producing a vaccine in less than nine months ahead of most expectations. We also know that Donald Trump's communication has been disastrous, and it will take time to digest and figure out in detail which policies were actually enacted by the U.S. administration and by the White House and work out if Operation Warp Speed actually worked. It will be difficult to obtain specific figures on this before spring or summer, at which point authorities hope they will have at least weakened the pandemic. OK, Matthew, thank you very much indeed. Do stay safe over there. And I know you're watching for all developments. Matthew Mavan, our correspondent, uh, along with Fanny Ella for this uh, Reporters. You can see, of course, uh, their report again via our website, france24.com. This is Reporters on France 24. Do stay with us. Most of all, stay safe.